Hello, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So, um, it seems like for tonight, we're not going to be having a full crowd or maybe in a while, maybe, because, well, it's a replenishment co uh, class. Therefore, it is always expected that less people are going to show up as, you know, it's not the regular schedule. But for those of you who are here, welcome, welcome. And thank you for being at the class. Um, already, people. So for tonight, we're going to be developing class number four. This is going to be the last class for this week. And uh, um, let me tell you that there is one activity or one question, as I told you before, that I love to ask questions before we get started with the lessons. There is one question that I always like to ask when we get to the last day of the week. And for tonight, we're going to be having the first chance to go ahead and, uh, well, actually practice the first time um, answering this question. And this is, I think, the first question that is going to be um, an open-ended one, you know, and you're going to have the chance to to answer with your explanations, your full own explanations, and uh, um, put up your ideas on the topic or on the, on the question. And... Uh, it's very simple. The question is just, um, what are your plans for the weekend? Okay, or or do you have any plans for the weekend? All right, so basically that, just think about what are the things you're planning to do during this weekend? What is uh, that idea you have about these two days? This time around, it's gonna be only two days. Normally we have three days off because we have Friday, um, Saturday and Sunday, but this time around, we're only gonna have Saturday and Sunday. So what are your plans for the weekend? What are the activities you would like to develop? What are the things that um, are ahead on your schedule? So that's the question for the night. Um, so I will give you just one, one second for you to think about your answer. And then I'm going to start uh, asking you and also providing some examples to what some possible answers can be. For example, in my case, if you were to ask me, I think that uh, for this weekend, I have to work because, yes, I will have to go to work. Um, but apart from that, I also expect to go to church. So that will be one of the things that I will uh, expect be expecting to do during the weekend. And uh, maybe also get to rest on Sunday because um, I don't really have, you know, many plans for Sunday. Another thing that I do on Sundays, and that's something that is taking a big chunk of my Sundays on the last um, couple months, is going to classes. I am taking so a course on air conditioning at the moment. So, you know, I have to go to those classes on Sunday afternoon. So that's also, as I said, a big chunk of my Sunday taken away by that. So those will be the plans that I have going um, to work, going to church. Um, resting for a bit at home and going to class. How about you? What will be your plans for this weekend? Let's see if we start by getting to hear from Francisco. So tell us, Francisco, what are the plans? What are your plans for this weekend? In my case is work and from uh, 4 a.m. to 7 p.m. I, I, I don't have a time for, for me. <laughs> It is what it is. It's adult life. Sometimes, you know, yeah, you have it's to my life today, today, today. Uh, yeah. and, and Monday, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, in the mañana. Uh, morning? Oh, sí, la mañana uh, morning. Morning. Mm -hmm. uh, driving, uh, and traffic, 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 traffic. <laughs> my day is beautiful. <laughs> well, that's how it is sometimes. <laughs> If you live in the big city, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what you get. Sometimes it's difficult. So it's totally understandable. Yeah. And I think it's mostly in the last few months. It hasn't been the same every day, right? It hasn't been the same like always. I think it's something that changed like in the last two months. Or do you think it's the same uh, since? I, I work, uh, I work all, um, toda la semana, uh, I work. week. Okay. Well, yeah, I I no rest, I no descanso. Yeah, but still, <laughs> it is what it is. Adult life sometimes treats you that way, 
And um, yeah, we only have to face life as as it comes. So it is sad because it is a little bit sad that you don't get you know time off. But at the same time, um, your great effort or the effort that you're doing right now is going to pay off. So hopefully it will pay off soon. So good luck at your work. What do you do? Sorry, what is your your work? Uh, uh, I am in, driver. In driver, right? I yeah, driver. I remember that. Yeah, I in told dry, you. Uh, Uber. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, I can tell now why <laughs> you talk about traffic so much. No se esperaba esa respuesta el profe. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that coming. Honestly, I didn't see that coming. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it is what it is. It is what you get. I have have had some experiences in San Salvador. As I said before, I live here in San Miguel. We get traffic, but it's not that hard. You know, it's not that bad. Um, but in San Salvador, it's just horrible. And uh, yeah, traffic is just even getting worse day by day. So good luck. So driving the start at uh, 4 a.m. at um, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. in normal is traffic. Not at all before. <laughs> yeah you get used to it it happens of course hopefully you get you know to have nice clients and good music because if not uh life will be unbearable well let's move on how about we hear now from uh alejandro how about you alejandro what are your plans for this weekend Hello there, Alejandro Quintanilla. Hello, teacher. I'm sorry. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, did you ask me something? Excuse me. I'm yes. Sorry. Uh, it's the question for tonight. And the question is, what are your plans for this weekend? Again, please. What are the plans? What are your plans for this weekend? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, my plan for this weekend is work in one of, of my cars. Mm -hmm. I have to fix it mm -hmm. because I I have a car um, disarmed is mm -hmm. the is the word, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So this is this is uh, maybe my main uh, plan for this weekend. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, that sounds interesting. You know, sounds like a in English, sometimes we call that DIY. DIY. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that, but yeah, DIY. 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 Do it yeah, yourself. Do it yourself. Very good. Uh, DIY. There you go. Yes. 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 Do it DIY. yourself. Yes. Do it yourself. Yeah. That is what <laughs> it means. So yes. yes. Um. Normally, that's what you refer to it. You know, when you do any kind of like craftsman work or handiwork at your home. And you do it by yourself. It is a DIY. It is becoming a more yes. common term yes. or um, definition in the last few months. And of course, it's growing in population. People are now getting more skillful. Uh, and even, you know, the use of the internet like YouTube um, helps us a lot to develop. Exactly. Um, yeah, to develop some projects that if yes. it wasn't for the internet, we wouldn't really be able to carry them out. So, yeah. Yes, oh, very true. good and good luck. I hope you know the car runs smoothly when you uh put it back together. That is also another way to refer to it. You said disarm, but also you can um say it um put apart. You know, eso sería como otra forma de podernos referir a eso, ¿verdad? Pero disarm is okay. All right, you can okay. use disarm, but it's uh put apart. You can be another put way apart. to say yeah to say uh to refer to the car when you have taken you know all the um the components or pieces apart from okay. one another so okay good. thank Very you good. best of luck thank for your project all right <laughs> um let's see now if we can hear from iris how about you iris what are your plans for this weekend hi teacher hello Excuse me. It's okay. I have the problem with my computer. I think it. No worries. No worries. It's okay. And uh, how we can and uh, the plan is like working in my store. Mm -hmm. 
and the um, the survey and the boy the the short. All right. Uh, the other um, by the the I don't know say the the, the mercado. Okay, so buy groceries. And and the um, what do you say? Uh, I sleep all that all rest the day. Um, you can refer to it or say rest the whole day. Rest the whole day. Eso sería principalmente cuando hemos mencionado tal vez el día. Digamos, si dijéramos el domingo, ¿verdad? Yo puedo decir yeah. on Sunday. On Sunday. In the morning, I go to the gym, the, the, the short. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on yeah. Sunday, after church, para ser más correctos, after church, I'll rest the whole day. Ahora, aquí puede aparecer alguien, un gramaturgo delicado, y les diga, no, pero entonces si ya fue a la iglesia, ya no es todo el día. Le puede decir a alguien que diga, rest, um, the rest of the day. Eso sería bastante contraproducente porque ya estamos utilizando la, el verbo rest, así que por eso yo les aconsejo que mejor digamos rest the whole day, porque en la, en la actividad previa, o sea, ya se, se aclaró, ¿verdad? Que sería after church, sí, after church, I'll rest the whole day. Después de la iglesia voy a, a descansar todo el día. So, very good. Um, cuando hablamos de eh, las compras, cuando nos referimos principalmente a las compras de comida o cosas básicas para el hogar, nos referimos un, a esto un como... un lugar específico? Um, sí, ajá, como si vamos al mercado o al súper, ¿sí? Eh, vamos a referirnos a esta actividad como do groceries. Sí. No decimos buy groceries, sino do groceries. Es una costumbre, no necesariamente es quizá lo más común, ¿verdad? Normalmente nosotros tenemos la idea de que sería buy groceries porque decimos, ¿verdad? Comprar alimentos. Pero eh, muchas actividades así en inglés se expresan con el do. Sí, como por ejemplo cuando decimos el do homework. Y o sea, nos referimos al hacer tarea, ¿verdad? Um, hay personas a veces que dicen do peace y se refieren a, a hacer la paz. Entonces, do the groceries sería el verbo que utilicemos para referirnos a ir de compras, pero por comida o básicos para el hogar. So, do groceries will be, you know, the title we use to, um, to refer to that. Um, some people say buy food. Uh, that is okay because you are basically describing what you're going to do. But if you want to sound better, you know, go with the do groceries part. What do we call, apart from that, what do we call the activity that we develop when we go shopping or when we go uh, to get, for example, um, luxuries or when we go to get um, clothing or things apart from food and from basics or home basics? We are going to refer to that to, as I just said, go shopping. Sí, cuando estamos hablando de hacer, a, a ir de compras para, para cosas que no son eh, necesidades, like, por ejemplo, if you go and get a perfume, if you go and get uh, a pair of shoes, or if you go and get, um, you know, a new set of pants, or maybe new sunglasses, um, you will refer to that to go shopping. It's not going to be um, do groceries, it's going to be um, go shopping, okay? So you have those two activities, pero principalmente uh, el hecho de ir de compras por comida o por básicos del hogar, se va a referir, ¿verdad?, como do groceries, conste. Eso es cuando vamos, como bien dijo, y muy buen ejemplo o muy buena pregunta, de hecho, de parte de Iris, cuando estamos hablando de ir al súper y cosas así, porque no vamos a decir lo mismo, no voy a decir yo, I am doing groceries at Pollo Campero, porque eso ya es go to a restaurant, ¿sí? O sea, do groceries es cuando vamos de compras al súper, al mercado, y traemos las cosas para, pues, tenerlas disponibles en la casa, cocinarlas en casa. Pero si vamos al, a un supermercado, perdón, a un restaurante, eso será, ¿verdad? Go to a restaurant. Ok, es diferente. No vayan a decir ustedes, oh, I'm doing groceries at Wendy's. O sea, no. A menos, claro, que ustedes compren 70 hamburguesas de Wendy's y las tienen en su casa listas para estarlas consumiendo. Entonces, esa sería sus groceries. Si es así, excuse me, all right? Because I don't have the money to do that. But if you do that, it's great. All right, but yeah. Uh, so, as I said, les voy a mandar aquí el go shopping para que lo tengamos también listo. So, go shopping. Great. Very good. 
Um, let's see, let's move on. And now we are going to hear from um, Andrea. How about you, Andrea? What are your plans for this coming weekend? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, I study and doing universe homework and also helping my mom with housework. Okay. I don't know, tarea del hogar. Yeah. Ya les doy la palabra que se usa para esto. All right, so uh, you're going to uh, study, do university homework, and also do chores. Sí, esa es la palabra que utilizamos para referirnos a las tareas del hogar. Chores. Y se escribe casi como eh, nos imaginamos, ¿verdad? Que diríamos chores cuando hablamos de los shorts de en español. Sí, chores, do chores. Um, diferente, eso es muy diferente a esto otro. Si ustedes hablan de shore o shores de esta forma, esto se va a referir a las costas, ¿sí? A una costa. Eh, entonces, es con che, no con sh, sino con che. So, chores, chores. Um, y esa es la palabra que utilizamos para referirnos a las tareas del hogar. So, you will help your mom with um, chores. No decimos home chores, sino que más bien solo decimos chores. Y ya eso se, se entiende que pues estamos hablando acerca, ¿verdad?, de las tareas del hogar. Um, tell me, Alejandro. Excuse me, teacher. Um, mm -hmm. What's the meaning of offshore? Offshore. Yes. Eh, offshore, we are going to use it when we're talking about things that are, um, like, uh, outside of the land. Like, for example, if you're referring to something that took place in the ocean, that is offshore. And also, offshore. We, we use it when uh, we talk about, um, like, things that happen in remote locations. Okay, like, let's say that uh, our country has a, a tiny island in the middle of the ocean. So that will be offshore. Like, I have a bank account offshore. And when we do things... We can also use this word when we do things that are not illegal, but as somebody will say, out of the books. Sí, cosas que estén fuera del libro. So that can also be used. Offshore can also be used for that. So offshore oh, okay. is going to be for something that, that is out of the limit, just to say. You know, something that oh, is okay. out of the limit. So yeah. Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. All right. So um, yeah. So uh, that is offshore. Also... Another thing or another uh, context in which many people use the word offshore is, uh, for example, as I said before, when you have like a bank account and you don't have it in your own country, people that have bank accounts in Switzerland or Costa Rica, which are, you know, countries that allow that for people to manage money without asking too many questions. Um, so those uh, activities are also going to be referred to as offshore activities. If you run a company and your company, or if you live in Italy, but your company is based in Germany, your company is offshore. So everything that is outside of the limit where you are um, a resident or where you live is going to be offshore. So okay. moving on then. Um, last person that I will be asking the question for the night is going to be, where did you go? Ana, Ana Mendoza. Tell us, what are your plans for this weekend, Anna? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, well, I think sleep. All right. And get up late. <laughs> really, yes. All right, very good. That is a nice plan. That sounds like an amazing plan, you know? We all, I think, have a uh, wish to have that chance at least once in, in our lives. So, very good. Getting up late and also sleeping as much as possible. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like an amazing plan to me. All right. Don't very good. Don't get up for nothing. <laughs> Sorry? Don't get up for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. You know, just not getting up in, independently on whatever goes on. And uh, yeah, you just stay in bed. Just enjoy your bed. So okay. hopefully you are going to have the chance to do that. Hopefully. Now. Uh, we are going to get to talk about electronics. That is going to be the topic for tonight. Electronics and, uh, well, 
some of the words that we use or verbs uh, in some occasions, phrasal verbs that we use to refer to, um, well, the common problems as it is the main topic for the unit. Uh, we're going to continue to discuss problems that can happen in electronics. First, we have on this side some sentences that, um, you know, we're going to read and then we are going to be trying to identify which one of these verbs over here is going to describe best what can happen or what um, problem is being described in the sentence. For example, the first sentence that we have is, my computer is driving me crazy, it. Now, if we read over here, we have the verb breakdown, we have crash, we have flicker, we have freeze, we have go dead, we have jam, we have overheat and skip. So, first of all, I would like us to take some time to search for these, um, for these definitions. And I will give you guys, voy a parar la, de compartir y voy a darles ahorita una actividad específica, ¿sí? A ver, tenemos que los verbos, un segundo, los verbos acá son ocho. Ok, so I will name eight of you and I will be sending one of these verbs and the name, all right? What you have to do is that you have to look for a definition on the internet for this verb, all right? So I will be sending you guys this information and start searching um, as soon as possible. All right, so break down, let's see, goes for arriving. Yeah, so breakdown goes for arriving. Uh, then we have crash. Crash is going to have to be searched by, um, okay, Nadia. We, there we go, Nadia. Then we have Flickr. Flickr. Flickr will be searched by um, Alicia. All right, so Alicia, you will be looking for the word Flickr and the meaning for it. Then we have Freeze. Freeze will be searched by, let me see, um, Jenny. All right, so freeze by Jenny. All right, then we have, uh, let me see, go dead. Go dead will be searched by Saul. All right, so go dead by Saul. Then we have jam. Jam is a very simple verb. Jam is going to be searched by Maritza. Okay, so Maritza. Then we have overheat, overheat. Overheat is going to be searched by Iris. And last but not least, we have skip. Skip is going to be searched by Katia. All right, so uh, I would like to see if, uh, arriving, do you have the definition for breakdown already? All you have to do is just read the definition. Ok, solamente leer la definición que usted logra encontrar para este verbo. So, um, breakdown. What is the meaning of breakdown, arriving? Uh, I found that it's like descomponer, but I don't... Well, I, I imagine what it means. Okay, look, it's ah, because yes. I think it's yeah. not for food, it's no. for uh, home appliances. Ya me acordé. Les digo, tuve que haber dicho antes. Um, traten de poner en el buscador, sí, definition, así como si fuese en inglés. O sea, no solo la palabra, sino definition. Porque si no, difícilmente les va a dar una definición. Y conste que el buscador es bien terco, ¿sí? Y a mí se me tardó casi como dos años para poder empezar a mostrarme definiciones de verdad eh, de palabras en inglés. O sea, a veces eh, siempre trata, ¿verdad?, de, de, de darnos eh, nuestras preferencias. Y el buscador está seteado que la preferencia es um, el español, nos va a facilitar casi siempre definiciones en español. Pero, yes, you have a good idea, because, yes, breakdown for home appliances refers to something very different 
of breaking down when we refer to food because when it's uh food um well what did you say you found that was the meaning of breakdown uh, descomponer aha uh -huh. so breakdown básicamente este verbo se referirá a la acción de descomponer sí o sea cuando algo se arruina o se echa a perder pero también se puede utilizar cuando estamos hablando de eh, desglosar, ¿ok? Ese no es el uso que estamos buscando ahorita, solamente es que recordé que se puede utilizar para eso, o sea, en el caso que ustedes, por ejemplo, eh, when you're breaking down a topic, like as I try to do, I try to explain, you know, things by pieces, so that's breaking down. Um, that is also another meaning for breakdown, but yes, breakdown means when something goes uh goes wrong when something goes broken when something stops working properly so that will be you know a good definition to break down when something stops working properly all right now moving on um nadia what is the definition you found for the for the word or the verb crash in, in my case i found two two meanings mm -hmm. uh, the first is uh to cut. And the second means is a uh, quiebra financiera. All right. And none of them is actually related to the topic of tonight. Uh, because, yes, those are great definitions for the word. Para que vean. Ay, no. Creo que mejor voy a tratar de, de dejar de decirles tanta definición o tanto eh, significado para las palabras, porque si no van a terminar decepcionados. Porque sí, Crash tiene tres definiciones. Crash, when we talk about a car crash, pero es diferente. Si no solo es crash, sino es a car crash. Eso es un accidente. Ahora, claro, ya después en las noticias, por ejemplo, después que dicen a car crash took place here and there and there, ellos empiezan solamente a decir, ¿verdad? The crash, the crash, the crash, pero porque ya definieron que es un car crash. Entonces es un accidente o como bien dijo Nadia, chocar. Luego también tenemos el crash. When economy crashes, significa que hay una quiebra financiera. Incluso... Eh, no solo la economía en general, sino que las compañías también, ¿verdad? Pueden eh, declararse básicamente en quiebra. No es lo mismo, porque no es lo mismo. Bankrupt is very different from crashing. Crashing is like an accident, and bankrupt is when there is no way back. Okay, bankrupt is like when you're done and your company cannot continue to function anymore. But the one that we're trying to find here, crash, is um, something related to technology. And uh, let me see if I can find another one. Crash. Crash can refer to, come on. Okay, let me see. Come on, dude. The thing is that what, what happens when something crashes is that it also stops working, but a crash is not as terrible as a breakdown. A crash, um is similar to what just happened now, okay? Very similar to what is happening to me right now. I am crashing, I am having problems, I am not, my internet is not working properly. So that is a crash. A crash is when something um, goes wrong or something stops um, working properly. Let's see. Um, okay, uh, let's look for more. No. A sudden, no, no, a sudden distributes drop. Okay, here we have it. Um, a sudden failure, which puts a system out of action. Sí, o sea que se podría referir como una falla repentina que pone un, un sistema fuera de acción. O sea que deja de funcionar de forma correcta. That is a crash. As I said, a proper example came up which was my internet failing. So my internet was crashing. It wasn't working properly. So that's what happens when something crashes. What can crash? Um, let's say that um, you're trying to watch a video on YouTube and your computer simply stops working and it doesn't show the video. You can say that you know your um, screen is crashing. Um, or for example, if uh, you notice that as what just happened to me, the internet stops or stops working properly, then it's crashing. If 
you start hearing noises or weird noises on a speaker that you have. Let's say you have a, a Bluetooth speaker and it, stop, it stops working properly, then it's also crashing. So when something starts crashing is when it stops um, working properly. A car can also crash on its own when it stops working properly. Um, a car crash is not the same as your car crashing. Okay, your car can crash on its own, but a car crash is when you have like an accident, a collision. Uh, Nadia, tell me. Peter, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I, I can say if the, the part, the party is a crash when the party is finished suddenly? Yes, mm -hmm. you can say, for example, uh, as I said, is a sudden situation, something that happens um, spontaneously, you know, something unexpected. So, yes, um, you can also refer to it in a, in a good way. For example, um, if you're having a conversation and somebody gets in the middle of it, but it's like a nice thing to happen, like a nice conversation that the person is bringing along, you can also say, I, I'm sorry to crash in. Sí, o sea, pues como en siento eh, interrumpirlos. You can use it like that, okay? And or maybe you can say like, when Nadia crashed into the party, it became even better. Sí, entonces sería como cuando Nadia llegó, ¿verdad? A la, a la fiesta, puede utilizarse también en sentidos positivos. La fiesta se puso mejor. Pero también podemos utilizarla. La mayoría de los significados que tiene son negativos. Conste la palabra crash. Eh, sí. Como lo que usted preguntó, ¿verdad? Uh, because, yes, a party can be crashed because of an accident, for example. If um, something goes wrong, if somebody, let's say that somebody got um, food poisoned or something like that. Food poison significa eh, como que alguien se pone mal, ¿verdad? Del, del estómago. So when some, someone gets um, food poisoned or something, that can crash a party. Y eso significa que la arruina, ¿verdad? Que la echa a perder, que termina. La fiesta. So, yes, you can use it like that. Okay, now, Alicia, how about flicker? What is the definition we found for flicker? Uh, the meaning is parpadeo. Okay. Creo que para la próxima, ahorita creo que todos tenemos casi lo mismo. Para la próxima tratemos de hacer lo que les digo, de poner definition, porque yo que quería era que leyeran, ¿verdad? En sí, la definición en inglés. But yes, parpadeo, flicker. Flicker is what happens when... Uh, mostly with the screens. It happens most commonly with screens. When they stop working properly and you start seeing like flashes, you start seeing lights coming out of the screen. And uh, um, when I say screen, I don't only mean TVs or phones. It can also be seen on um, anything that has a screen, a stove, uh, a speaker, or a, um, a what? A microwave can also flicker. So anything that, you know, has a display and the display stops, it starts uh, blinking or showing colors or not showing a stable information or stable signal, that can refer as, or we can refer to that as flickering. Also, when a phone stops, it stops working properly, you're on a call and then the phone starts sounding weird, uh, it starts sounding weird that can refer to as flickering. So flickering, básicamente, se refiere a todos aquellos fallos, pero que no son permanentes. El breakdown es cuando algo se arruina. O sea, se arruinó y ya, ¿verdad? Ahí quedó. En cambio, similar a crash. O sea, pero crash, a ver, el breakdown es una ruina total. Crash es que falló, pero se puede recuperar. Flicker es cuando está empezando a fallar. O sea, crash es como repentino, flicker no. Flicker nos está dando señas, ¿verdad? De que aquello se está arruinando. Imagínense como cuando ustedes tenían eh, un juguete con baterías y el juguete empezaba... Entonces, o sea, y está empezando a fallar. Sí, nos está dando señas de que se está arruinando. So that is flickering. All right, so you can refer to anything that happens like that, which is like a continuous... Um, malfunction of the system that can refer to as flickering. All right. Now, Jenny, what is the definition you have for freeze? Uh, for freeze, the definition is of, of a liquid be turned into ice or another solid as a result of extreme cold. 
All right. That is a proper definition for what the weather. All right. When we're talking about weather or water, that would be great. Um, in this case, as we're talking about electronics or technology, when something freezes, creo que hasta ya lo han usado. O sea, en realidad creo que este, este sí lo han yeah. usado en algún punto. Que se dice, hey, se me frizó el teléfono, se me frizó la computadora. Sí. Se quedó estático. Básicamente eso es lo que sucede. Uh -huh. When something freezes, when uh, an equipment freezes, is when it stops working. Sí, o sea, se, se detiene y se queda ahí. Ahora, it's different from a crash and from a breakdown because a freeze is something that you guys can solve simply by being patient. Okay, just wait there, just, you know, let the system continue to do the process and it will unfreeze on its own. But um, a crash, as I said before, it, you can, yes, you can let it be solved on its own, but not only by, faith, by, by patience, you will have to do something to avoid a crash from getting worse. But a freeze is just like a momentaneous stop uh, on the system and it just you know it's just there like when you're on a video call and uh again the signal doesn't work properly and you freeze in the in the middle of the video call so yeah. that is also another way of referring to um to the freezing thing in in electronics all right how about saul what is the definition you have for go dead okay the definition of the phone is to stop working, especially because of not having electricity. For example, the phones went dead during the storm. All right, very good. Yes, that is something uh, very, very specific. When something goes dead, th things that go dead are normally things that run on batteries. Okay. It doesn't mean that they are the only things that can go dead. Things that um, run on electricity can also go dead because, well, there is no electricity supply because there was an interruption on the supply. But most things that work on batteries like computers or cell phones or um, flashlights, you know, anything like that can and normally will go dead at some point. Um, Nadia, tell me. Teacher and um, go dead is only electrician? Mm, normally. Only with uh, electrician? You can use it with people. If you, that's what where you're going, you can use it with people. Si, si vamos hacia ese camino, si es eso lo que, lo que estamos queriendo averiguar, sí si se puede utilizar con personas o animales o también con plantas. También se puede. Pero eh, en el caso, ¿verdad? Que estamos hablando de electrónicos o de, o de eh, electrodomésticos, GoDead is going to be used merely with those things that run on batteries. So, good. Very good. Now, jam. Maritza, what is jam or what is the definition you have for jam? Okay, jam as a name means mm -hmm. clusters of uh, ducts that prevent the passage, something oh. that is an obstacle. Very good, very good. When something as is a verb, uh -huh, uh -huh. to jam is action that block or putting obstacles. Very good, great. Thank you. That As, is great. Uh, food. Mm -hmm. Jam is sweet that is made by cooking fruit. Okay. Great. Nice. You have them all. So, noun and verb are very similar. Things that present an obstacle. So, when something gets jammed, uh, normally is when it is not easy to move that. All right. Ahora, aquí viene una palabra importante para Francisco. Sí. O esta palabra en sí puede ser utilizada por Francisco. ¿Por qué? Eh, a ver, a veces cuando describimos situaciones como el tráfico, hablamos acerca, ¿verdad? De heavy traffic, light traffic, y también podemos hablar acerca de jams. Cuando hablamos acerca de un jam en cuestiones de tráfico, es un atasco, ¿sí? O sea, es un, eh, una situación en la cual los carros no se mueven por media hora, una hora, hora y media. Entonces, that is a jam. When traffic is jammed is when it's basically impossible for you to move. So, um, because there are obstacles, there are many things blocking the, cur the normal flow of the traffic. In this case, when we talk about electronics, it will be very similar. It will be, for example, when we talk about um, 
let's say that I'm trying to get out the batteries of my remote controller and I cannot get them out. So because they're jammed, they are just too attached into their um their cabinet and it's basically impossible for me to get them out. So that means that they got jammed. Or for people who still use CDs, if you still use CDs or DVDs, um, sometimes you know the 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 releaser um is old or gets stuck, and then the CD doesn't come all the way out, and you have to try to pull it out, and it's just stuck there. So when something gets stuck there, or in in you know instead of coming out. It means that it's jammed. Sí, o sea, que se quedó atorado. So that is what we refer to when we talk about jam. When things um, are difficult to get out or difficult to maneuver. So that will be um, in electronics, getting jammed. All right. Then overheat. We have overheat by Edis. Tell us, Edis, what is the definition you found for overheat? Okay. Her car is turned to overheat. Overheat is at sobrecalentar. Very good. Overheat is when something gets hotter than regular. Many things, and I don't know if you guys are the kind of people who like to read the instructions before you start using an equipment. Like, let's say when you got your first phone, um, did you ever stop for a while to read, you know, all the manufacturer settings and all the um, manufacturer also advices and all that, or user's guide? We have those two different things. And maybe you had a look at, you know, the temperatures, the regular temperatures that your phone is supposed to be operating under. Um, but if you haven't, if you're just the kind of people who just gets the equipment and starts using it, well, let me tell you, basically everything has a regular temperature for operation or off operation. When you're using um, a TV, when you're using a stove, when you're using any kind of appliance, it has, it always comes with instructions for that, for the supported um, temperature that, you know, the appliance is going to be able to run under. But if you go above that level, if it ever goes above that level, then it means that it will start overheating and the systems will start to fail as well. Nadia, tell me. Um, teacher, we... can use uh, over here when and we refer to weather mm, when we talk about the weather it will be just it will be a bit difficult um because well you know the weather is something like it's supposed to be very stable um, normally, it will not get to the part where it like overheats because overheating is for something that has like a set, um, like a set temperature. But the weather is some. Sorry, aquí me quedé explicando a medias. Bueno, so as I was saying, with the weather, it will be very difficult because when we talk about the weather, is something that um we cannot control. Okay, and it's not like under our control how hot or how cold the weather is. Um, you can use it in some instances. Like, for example, if um, you are in the middle of the winter. Winter, talking about winter in the United States where there is a snow. Okay, so you're in the middle of the winter. And of course, there are some temperatures that are expected for the day. But then... And on a specific day, the temperature goes above the expectation and they become too hot. Then maybe you can say that the day overheated, you know, the, the temperature. It was a little bit overheated because it was beyond what was expected. But normally when we talk about overheating something, we're mostly going to be talking about um, like mechanisms. I'm not going to say only appliances because you can overheat like um, an engine. You know, when you're talking about a car, you can overheat that. Um, you can overheat food, for example. You know, you can also do that. Um, you can overheat what? An iron. If you're trying to like um, iron cloth, you can overheat that as well. So, yeah, but with the weather, it will be very weird to use the word overheat. Normally, what you will say will be that um, it was 
for example, hotter than expected, but not overheating. Already, and the last one was for se me borró el chat, pero creo que no está aquí ya, verdad? La persona que le di la última. Yes, Ka Katia say in the chat to moonlight and quickly making a small jump after each step. Okay. All right. So yeah, making a small jump after each step. Very good. That is basically what we refer to uh, when we talk about skipping. A skipping is to make it simple, just avoiding one step. Like when you are walking up the stairs uh, and uh, let's say that you are the kind of people who doesn't like to take every single step on the stair and you just skip one or are jumping from, let's say, the um, level number one to level number three then from level number three to level number five. So then that is the skipping. Now, in electronics, we're not gonna see skipping very often because normally we confuse, we confuse the skipping with flickering. You know, it's very easy to confuse them both. And it's more common to use the word flickering than skipping. But with some things like appliances, like microwaves or um, what, washing machines, you can, you know, say that they are skipping processes. Like, for example, when a washing machine starts to break down, um, you will start noticing that it's normally like, for example, it goes from washing to drying right away without the process of um, um, like draining the, the water. So it goes from washing to drying instead of draining or, you know, like rewashing. The clothes so that will be like a skipping but it's not very common it's not something that happens very often but you know it is there it is a problem that can happen now it is way more common to use a skipping when we refer to mechanical parts like when we talk about cars or when we talk about like bicycles let's say that in a bicycle chain you see that there have it like the 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 rotor it has many teeth so let's say that uh when you're trying to drive your bike um you're pedaling on the bike and then at some point you feel like you're not moving and that will be because the teeth are not getting into the chain and that will refer or you will can refer to that as a skipping like the teeth of your of your rotor are skipping the chain holes and of course they're not making you know the the bike move forward as expected so that can be an example when we use um you know the skipping now we gave, get back to this, uh, after we have gotten the definition, we go back to these examples or these sentences over here. And maybe now it's going to be easier for us to find a proper definition to the problem that is happening. The first one is, my computer is driving me crazy. It, uh, let's say that we use the word keep. It keeps, what do you think can be something or can be a problem that happens to a computer that can get you crazy? Un ejemplo de los que hemos visto ahorita, ¿verdad? Que pueda pasar en una computadora que los vuelva locos a ustedes. What do you think it can be? Can it be freezing? Can it be um, jamming, overheating, crashing? What do you think it is? Breakdown? Uh, maybe not, because... Uh, bueno. Digamos que si pongamos breakdown, entonces. It broke down all right recuerden breakdown es definitivo cuando hablamos de breakdown es algo que se arruinó y ya se arruinó vamos a ver the buttons on the remote control always stick they what can be used here what is the action that happens when something gets stuck the button the buttons on the remote control always stick they ¿Qué es lo que pasa? ¿Cómo decimos cuando algo se atora? Keeps jamming. Ok. They keep jamming. They jam. All right. They keep jamming. All right. Uh, then we have that use CD player often jumps to another song. It, it keeps skipping. Keep skipping. All right. Skipping. Very good. Uh, let's see. 
Our new flat screen TV has a problem. It keeps Uy. freezing. Okay. It keeps freezing. It keeps freezing. Very good. Then we have uh, those old cell phones never work right anymore. They keep going dead. They keep going dead. Very good. Básicamente es que se nos quedan sin batería, ¿verdad? So, yeah. They keep going dead. Uh, now we have, sometimes Ed can't use his solar power calculator. It keeps, it keeps what? Jam. Could be Jam. breaking down. Okay. It keeps breaking down, let's say. It keeps breaking down. Very good. How about my computer screen needs to be replaced? It, or it keeps, wait. why does it keep going? Going dead. All right. Let's say that it keeps going dead. How about, um, the answering machine never picks up any calls. It it keeps. What does it do? Maybe crashing. All right. It keeps. Or keep. No, no. Crashing. Crashing. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a reparar un par de estas, sí. Porque, por ejemplo, en la primera tenemos, ¿verdad?, el breakdown. Por lo tanto, significa que ya no la podemos utilizar en la siguiente. Así que aquí tenemos el it keeps breaking down. Para esta, ya que es una solar calculator, ahí vamos a entender que está expuesta a calor. So, in this case, it will be it keeps overheating. ¿Sí? O sea, se, se termina sobrecalentando. So, it's overheating. Now... Uh, my computer screen needs to be replaced. It keeps here. A better way would be um, flickering. Okay, it keeps flickering. Básicamente, ¿qué significa? Uh, significa que sigue eh, o se mantiene o sigue con, o continúa, perdón. Um, parpadeando, ¿sí? O que continúa eh, comportándose mal en el sentido de que la, la pantalla, ¿verdad? Eh, siempre se mantiene haciendo como ese tipo de, de saltos en, el, en cuanto a lo que está mostrando. So, it keeps um, Teacher, flickering. Yes? In Spanish, it's very common to say parpadear, but the correct verb is titilear. ¿Titilear? Titilear. Uh -huh. When something is doing... Gua, eh, What, flickering the, the screens? Ajá, eh, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, titilear. titilear. Okay, that's new to me. Example. Is titilear example, or pitilear? No, titilear. titilear. For example, if you see the stars, the stars, uh, some of them don't have a light. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, parece que parpadearan, pero no parpadean porque no tienen párpados. They are titileando. Okay, sí, aquí está. Titilar. I don't know how to say, well, I think it's uh, the, 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 it's like flickering. Mm -hmm. It's what flickering means. Mm -hmm. Titilar, yes. Básicamente aquí dice, uh, centellar con temblor ligero, un cuerpo luminoso. Uh, o temblar ligera e involuntariamente, en algo especial en parte del cuerpo. So yes, titilar, very good. Very good. That is that was a, that's a new verb to me in Spanish. I didn't know that one. So very good. Now, uh, for the rest of them, let's say that yeah, my computer is driving me crazy. It broke down. Uh, then we have the button of the remote control always stick. They keep jamming. Then the UCD player often jumps to another song. It keeps skipping. Uh, our new flat our new flat screen TV has a problem. It keeps freezing. Uh, then those old cell phones never work right anymore. They keep going dead because, of course, the batteries are not the best. Sometimes Ed can't use his solar power calculator. It keeps overheating. My computer screen's, screen needs to be replaced. It keeps flickering. 
uh, and the answering machine never picks up any calls, it keeps crashing. So that will be, you know, an appropriate way of describing the problems that can happen to electronics. Now, you can use, of course, all of these problems in the different variations depending on the problem that you're facing, because it doesn't mean that only because here we have that the computer uh, the screen needs to be replaced, it's only because it's flickering, because it can also be because it, it broke down, or it can also be because it um, just keeps freezing, because it always you know shows only the same image and just it gets just stuck there for a while. So it can also happen. Um, now, moving on, we have the passive with prepositions. When we talk about passive, um, we're going to refer to situations where something happens as a result of another action take, taking place. Okay, when we talk about the passive voice, which is the basic thing that we're going to be um, learning about afterwards, it refers to actions that take place because of another action. So here, we have two examples. We see that the air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. Now, there is something very weird that happens when we talk about passives. Because here, for example, the whole sentence will not have any sense, or not any sense, but will be meaningless if we take any of the sections apart from one another. Because if you simply say the air is being polluted, that has a meaning. And seeing it from a grammatical standpoint, it can also be an okay sentence because it has everything that is needed for a sentence to work. The thing that is weird about it is that it doesn't provide any meaning. It doesn't provide any special information or it doesn't give us a why. Okay. So it is an okay sentence. You can use it. You can say it, but it's going to be meaningless. It's going to be pointless that you say something just as the air is being polluted. And that is the magic, as some people may refer to it, that it comes with the passive voice. Because here, you're going to need the other section of the sentence to make the first section understandable. Now, uh, there is one clause that is dependent and one clause that is independent. Seeing it from a grammatical standpoint, o sea, si lo vemos desde el punto gramatical, hay una eh, parte de la oración que es independiente y otra que es dependiente. Sí, desde el punto de vista gramatical. Pero si lo vemos desde un punto de vista pragmático, no hay ninguna que sea independiente. O sea, ambas se necesitan entre sí para poder, para poder funcionar de forma correcta. Porque si yo solo digo que el aire está siendo contaminado, es cierto, es una oración que funciona, es una oración que alguien podría decir. Pero sin el resto de la información, esa oración no va a ningún lado. Así que por eso, eh, el passive voice ¿verdad? nos ayuda a introducir después la parte que para muchos desde la gramática es dependiente, porque sí depende de lo que se mencionó anteriormente, pero es quizá la parte más importante de la oración porque es donde se explica a raíz de qué está tomando lugar lo que se mencionó. So here, the air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. ¿Por qué saltea esto eh, antes de terminar, digamos, de cerrar con este tema? Porque esto nos va a ayudar también a poder dar una explicación, ¿verdad? Desde nuestro punto de vista del por qué, ¿sí? El por qué los problemas que suceden con, lo, con pues, cuestiones electrónicas o electrodomésticos pueden suceder. For example, let's say that one that I like to use is um, that uh, here, this one, these old phones or those old phones never work anymore. They keep going dead. Ahora, aquí podríamos agregar la explicación, ¿verdad? Because of the old battery technology, ¿sí? Or because of the poorly designed um, batteries. Entonces, allí ustedes están dando como una explicación completa del por qué algo sucedió y también estamos haciendo uso, ¿verdad? Um, do, 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 you're talking about this one over here? Sure. There you have it. Ok, entonces, el punto es que allí estamos dando una explicación completa acerca del por qué, ¿sí? desde nuestro punto de vista, eh, el problema tomó lugar. Y esto lo hacemos con el passive voice. ¿sí? En la voz pasiva lo que hace simplemente es 
ayudarnos, ¿verdad?, a poder describir una situación, como les decía antes, que toma lugar a raíz de otra situación. Pero la explicación se da casi siempre hasta el final de la oración para que eh, de esa forma, muchas estructuras así en inglés, lo que ayudan a hacer es que mantener, digamos, al oyente atrapado, ¿verdad? Para, para que se espere hasta el desenlace de la oración, porque la gramática del inglés tiene bastante eso, que a veces al principio la oración eh, parece tener, no tener sentido, pero luego con los componentes que vienen al final, se termina generando, ¿verdad? El sentido completo de la oración. Pero bueno, for now, basically that is it. Um, I am sorry that I was, you know, lagging today on the, with the internet. I don't know what happened. I will have to take a look at that. Um, but yeah, All I have to say is basically um, it was great, you know, getting to meet you guys during this week. Hopefully next week we're going to be able to continue learning and working and practicing more English. Um, so thank you very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope you have an amazing weekend and I also hope I can see you guys once again on Monday. So for now, take care. Bye-bye and see you Monday. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye teacher. teacher. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.